In my previous video, we looked at dBeaver, which is a very powerful tool that every database developer should know. Installing dBeaver on Windows is very simple. However, you could run into issues when you do not have admin rights or if you do not have access to the internet. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install dBeaver even if you don't have admin rights or if you don't have access to the internet from that machine. So let's get started. We'll start with our first scenario where you have admin rights and you have access to the internet from that machine. When you have a machine that has access to the internet and you have admin rights on it, installing dBeaver is very simple. Let's see how that works. So let's fire up a browser. In my case, I'm opening Firefox. In your case, it could be anything. Here, just Google for dBeaver. It should take you to the official website of dBeaver, which is dBeaver.io. So before you click on any link, make sure it is the right link and you're not clicking on some third party link. Now I'm in the dBeaver website, straight away in the landing page itself, I see these two options, dBeaver Community and dBeaver Pro. dBeaver Pro, as the name says, is the professional version that has a lot more features, but for this video, we are going to stick with the community version. So under community, I'm going to click on download and that's going to take me to another page where it gives me a bunch of options. So these are the different installation files that are available based on the platform that you have. So since we are using Windows, I'm going to click on Windows installer. This will begin to download a file. As you can see, it's around 120 MB and it should take a few seconds to complete. The download is complete and now we will start the installation. So I'll access the file. I'll directly launch it from here. This is the installer of dBeaver. I'll keep the language as English. Then click on next. Agree on the license agreement and choose users. Uh, you can leave it at default. Click on next. And in this screen as well, you can just leave the default options as is. And then finally next once again and then install. So this might take just few seconds, but mostly it should complete within a minute. So once it's done, just click on finish. And before you do that, I mean, you do have the option of creating a desktop shortcut if you want to do that. I like my desktop to be clutter free, so I'm not going to select that option. I'll just click on finish. And now that we have successfully installed dBeaver on Windows, we're going to use it to connect to a Postgres database. This Postgres database is running on my machine. So the first thing we'll do is we will launch dBeaver so I'm going to click on search and here you can see the app is installed. I'll click on just open. So it launched the application, but it's on my other monitor. So let me drag it here. The first time you launch dBeaver, it's going to give you an option to create a sample database. I would say this is harmless. So click, go ahead and click on yes. It's also going to ask about data share. You can always choose not to click on confirm. And then here is dBeaver. So this is the dBeaver environment. And you can see it has already created a sample database, but we don't have to worry about that. What we are going to do now is connect to the Postgres database. So for those of you who are familiar with Postgres database, it runs at a default port of 5432. I do have a Postgres database running on my machine at the exact same port. So on the top left, you will see this icon, new database connection. Click on that. I'm going to choose Postgres SQL from that. Click on next. And I'll just make sure I enter all the details here so that dBeaver can connect to my database. Now, here is the most important part. I have entered all the details of the database and I want to test the connection. The moment I click on it, since this is the first time dBeaver has been installed, before it can connect to this Postgres database, it is going to download some libraries from the internet. So these libraries are nothing but JDBC drivers that dBeaver needs to communicate to the database. So I'll go ahead and click on test connection. Now you can see this wizard comes up and it shows a bunch of drivers that are needed. Now all you have to do is just click on download here and it's going to connect to the internet and download all these files. Now this is exactly why I was saying that when you install dBeaver, you also need internet access so that dBeaver can download these files as required. And here you can see dBeaver has successfully connected to my database. So I'll just click on OK. Let me also tell you that this is a one time event. Meaning the very first time you connect to a Postgres database, it needs these JDBC drivers. From that point on, every time you connect to the same database or any other Postgres database, this will not be required because dBeaver has already downloaded all the required libraries. But let's say you connect to a SQL Server database for the first time. Again, there is going to be a download event where it's going to connect and download the SQL Server JDBC drivers. 
But again, from that point on, every other time you connect to a SQL Server database or any SQL Server database, those download will not be required. It will use the files that have already been downloaded, which is why to make dbweaver work on your machine, you need two things. One, you need admin rights to install. Second, you need access to the internet so dbweaver can download these files as and when required. So now that the test connection is successful, I'm going to click on finish. I'm able to browse my database and I can see that it has successfully connected to my database. So with this demonstration, we have successfully installed dbweaver as an installable application on windows and we have used the connectivity which is the internet connectivity to download jdbc drivers that are required to connect to a postgres database now let's move on to other scenarios so we were successful in installing dbweaver on windows 11 using our admin rights as well as using the internet connectivity to download the required jdbc drivers for postgres sql in this demo next we are going to see how to install dbweaver when you do not have admin rights on your machine. So let's find out. Many times the laptop or the desktop that's given to you by your employer, you simply do not have admin rights over it. And when you don't have admin rights, you cannot install any software by yourself. You probably have to raise a help desk ticket and they will only install if it's a part of their approved software. So what do you do in that case? So that's where we have something called as a portable install of dbweaver, which means you don't have to install anything. You just have to download a zip file from the dbweaver website and you can straight away extract it and start using the application. So let's see how that works. I have uninstalled dbweaver completely from my machine. Now we are going to see how to get the portable version of dbweaver. So let's start with the browser again. I'm going to Google for dbweaver. That will take me to the dbweaver website, which is dbweaver.io. Here, click on the download, which takes me to the download page. And within this, earlier we clicked on the Windows installer. This time, we are going to choose the Windows zip file. So click on that and that should begin a download. So you can see here, a file is being downloaded. The zip file has been downloaded. It's there in my downloads folder. What I'm going to do is let me copy it to another folder. So I've created a folder called dbweaver in my D drive and I have copied the zip file here. From here, I'm going to extract all of the files. Now this might take a couple of minutes. It's around 150 MB, so it shouldn't take too long. Once the extraction completes, it automatically opens up that folder. So there is a dbweaver folder. If you go inside that, you see a .exe file. Now this is the executable that will launch the dbweaver application. So just double click on this. You might get similar prompts like for sharing the data or creating a sample database, uh, what you saw earlier. You can choose the same options. Now once all of that is done, you see dbweaver has opened. It's just like the previous step. The best thing is that you don't need admin rights uh, to be able to install this. You just download the zip file, extract it, and double click on the exe file, and there you have dbweaver up and running. Let's also try and connect to the Postgres database. I clicked on test connection. Since this is a fresh installation, it's prompting me to download these uh, drivers all over again. So I'll just click on download, and it does the same thing that it did before. So there you go. dbweaver is now successfully connected to my Postgres uh, database. So this is how you can install dbweaver even if you don't have admin rights on your machine. I know a lot of people struggle because of this or you know, probably they're not aware that there is something called as a portable installation. Now let's look at our last scenario. Imagine you have set up dbweaver and now you're connecting to a database for the very first time. As I've explained before, dbweaver would connect to the internet to download some required JDBC files. But what if that machine does not have internet connectivity. And this is pretty usual in enterprise environments where your machine has access to, let's say the intranet, but internet is restricted. So some applications like dbweaver cannot connect to the internet and download files by themselves. How do you deal with this scenario? Uh, let's look at that. Here I have a fresh installation of dbweaver. So I have uninstalled dbweaver, I have uninstalled all the drivers. Now let's try connecting to my Postgres database. So the details remain the same. And now when I click on test connection, it says that these drivers are missing. So I'll click on download. And 
since I have disabled the network, it says it's not able to download these drivers. So as many times as I retry, it's not going to work. And this is the kind of error that you're going to get if your machine does not have access to the internet or if there is a very specific firewall restriction that prevents dBeaver from downloading files on its own. So now here is what we need to do. Click on abort and you can see here it says vendor website. You'll have to make a note of this and access it either from this machine or some other machine where your browser works and you are able to visit this website. So when I open this website or the browser, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to hit download and that will give me a couple of options. So I'm just going with the latest version, which is Java 8 version of JDBC driver. So I'll click on download. So you can see I've downloaded the file. It's a PostgreSQL 42.7.4.jar. That's the version of the file. Now let's go back to dBeaver. We're going to cancel this. You might get a couple of windows, just close them all. And finally click on cancel. Now go to the database, head over to driver manager. In the driver manager, search for Postgres. So here it is. And click on edit. Make sure you don't make any changes here. So I'm just going to use a snipping tool and take a screenshot of this. So as you can see, I've taken a screenshot of this. I'll keep it in another monitor. Now let's close this window. Here, we're going to say new. So the driver name I'll use as Postgres custom driver. The driver type will be Postgres. And for all the other details, such as class name, URL template, default port, and so on, I'm going to copy paste exactly what it is from the screenshot that I took earlier. So now you can see I've copied over all the parameters as is from the Postgres driver into this new driver that I'm going to create. And the last but the most important step is go to the libraries. So click on add file and we will need to select the jar file that we downloaded earlier. So here is the jar file. I'm going to click on open. And once the jar file is loaded, you can click on find class. It will automatically parse through the jar file and present the present the class that's available. So as you can see, it has correctly passed it and it has found the PostgreSQL driver. Make sure you select that, click on OK, and then click on Close. So we have added the driver successfully, but now the final test is to see if we can use this new driver to connect to the database. So let's start a new connection all over again. This time, instead of selecting the Postgres that's available here, I'm going to search for the Postgres custom driver that we created. So you can see here, it appears here as a generic icon. Select this, click on next, and everything else remains the same. I just have to type in my password of the database. Now once I've typed the password, I'll click on test connection. Since the JDBC driver already exists, dBeaver does not prompt to download anything from the internet, and you can also see it has successfully connected to the database. Now this is how you can set up drivers for any database, even if dBeaver has issues connecting to the internet or if there is some firewall that is stopping you from doing that. With this, we have come to the end of this video. We looked at three ways of setting up dBeaver and connecting to a database with internet access and admin rights, without admin rights and without internet access. I hope you found this video useful. In this video, we looked at JDBC drivers. In case you don't know what is JDBC and ODBC, I had made one video about that as well. You can check the link in the video description. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and hit that notification icon so you can get to know when I upload more videos on the same topic. If you liked my explanation in this video, you might be interested in signing up with me for a live instructor-led course on data modeling. I conduct a 30-hour live session on data modeling covering the various aspects of data modeling. If you're interested, reach out to me so I can share more details with you about this. You'll find my contact details in the video description. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for sticking till the end of this video.